Hi, and welcome to the Unreal Engine News and Community Spotlight. We're excited to announce that as of the Unreal Engine 420 release, a full integra integration with Shotgun, one of the leading production tracking, review, and assessment management tools, is available. Unreal Engine is the first game engine supported by the Shotgun Toolkit platform. And for more information on the integration itself and the capabilities of this new Shotgun integration, check out our blog. Drawing inspiration from shows such as The Twilight Zone and Black Mirror, the team at Aspire created Torn, described as a dark science fiction mystery narrative puzzler. The VR experience, released on August 28th, offers a journey into the world of an eccentric inventor and scientist. Players will bring a spooky mansion to life while reactivating the scientist's many mysterious machines. All the while, the players pull deeper into the rich narrative and story building that Aspire's work so diligently to create. We recently caught up with Neil Glancy, the creative director of Torn, to discuss the process of taking a VR title from early concept to its final form. Read up on his insights in the interview linked below. Eric Liu has been crafting 3D content and digital illustrations since he was 13. Now a recent graduate of the Department of Design at the National Taiwan University of Science and Technology, Eric used Unreal Engine to create the charming and visually stunning animated short, Robots Design Academy. In a wonderful 12 minutes, he shares a tale about creativity and daring to be different. The incredible short falls a robot student learning to create and design in a world mostly void of humanity due to some unknown apocalyptic event. Dismayed by the institution's insistence on strictly copying human creations, the droid sets out to design something bold and unique with the help of a newfound human pal. His efforts amply show that it doesn't always take a large team to craft amazing work. I encourage you to watch the short and get inspired. Our final piece of news today comes to us from SIGGRAPH 2018, which took place in beautiful Vancouver. Kite and Lightning took home first place at SIGGRAPH's Real Time Live for their project Fabulon. This subjectively adorable demo <laughs> shows off a man-powered baby that combines a variety of technologies to bring this ever-changing demo to life. Powered by the tech of an XN's inertial mocap suit and a tandem iPhone X to capture facial expressions, the entire demo is rendered in real time on stage using Unreal Engine. Many, many congrats to the team at Kite and Lightning. And on to our weekly karma earners. These fine folks are helping out their fellow UE4 devs by diving into Answer Hub and offering solutions to bugs or various tech issues. So many thanks to Every Nun, T. Sumisaki, Dijo, Thompson N13, Tuer, Ortrol, Omar Vector, The Dreamcatcher, Shadow River, and Asner. Thanks for your continued support, and maybe we'll see some more new names next week. Now for our community spotlight. Our first spotlight is a project called Straya, created by Jason Poots. His recre recreation of an Australian sh scene shows the wonder and mystery of the wilderness of Australia, from the massive crocodile to a variety of vegetation. The use of lighting and reflections really makes me want to explore this probably dangerous part of the Austra Australian brush. Well done, Jason. Fans of adventure games may recognize the look and feel of this snowy village. Blitz 17 shared this fable-inspired medieval town, which took roughly two months to complete. The slow snowfall and quaint buildings really help bring this scene together. There's something majestic about an old-style village covered in a blanket of white snow. So great job, Blitz. We, like, absolutely adore this scene. And our third spotlight was actually presented to us at one of our local meetups. This project was made by a team of seven students as a class project set in ancient mythological mythological China you play as Gu, the zodiac dog, who wields the power to transform into various zodiac animals and take on some of their animalistic traits. Using these traits, you must defeat demon cats hellbent on your destruction. We're excited to see what this team does next. Nice work, folks. Thank you for joining us for our news and community spotlight. Hey all, welcome to our Unreal Engine live stream. I'm your host, Amanda Bott. With me, I have Tim Hobson, yep. technical writer. 
That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim Slager, fellow community manager. So thank you all for tuning in. And you want to give a brief overview of what you're going to dive into today? Yeah, so we're going to take a look at the new 420 feature that we uh, added for the new cinematic depth of field. Um, this replaces the old circle depth of field uh, method that we did uh, previously have. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to just take a look at that and uh, use it a little bit with the cinematic camera and discover some of the general settings um, and kind of take more of a beginner, mid-level mid approach to you know, what is this thing and how can we really right, use it? Yeah. So uh, what are some of the, I mean, maybe you're already going to dive into it, but yeah. like what are some of the, the big differences moving into the um, It just it has more of an, an actual like film-like look to it, so mm -hmm. it looks more natural. Um, you don't get a lot, like with the old cinematic or uh, circle depth of field yeah. uh, method, it was, uh, you get a little bit more of like noise and grain. Mm -hmm. um, we used it on the kite demo okay. as our first kind of like thing for, for more of a cinematic look. And, right. and it worked really well for that. Um, but for games, it wasn't very performant. So uh, this new method is going to be much more performant for that. And, and it has a lot of optimization tweaks and things that you can do to make it used uh, in your normal games and stuff. So it doesn't have to just be like a, a cut scene. That's great. Awesome. Well, so. uh, feel free to dive right in. OK. Um, so first thing um, I really want to go over is, uh, you know, what is depth of field? You know, for anyone who's really not familiar, so you, you've seen it everywhere, you know, in like movies and things like that um, and TV shows. And you may have just not paid a lot of attention to it. So really it's, um, it's the distance in front of and behind uh, the camera, or I'm sorry, it's the distance in front of um, a focused subject and behind a focused subject um, in your scene. So it's like those areas become much more blurred. So um, I have a couple of screenshots here from one of our demos that we did. And bring this up. Um, so this is uh, from the Star Wars demo that we did at GDC uh, 2018. And what you get here is, uh, this is a really nice shot of some really foreground uh, blur on the tip of the gun. You have uh, the gun is the focal point, and then behind you have a, the display panel with like all the lights, where you start to get some really nice bokeh shapes um, from that mm -hmm. that really blurred effect caused by depth of field. Yeah. Um, and then if we look at some TV show shots, like this is one from like one of my favorite shows, Lost. You know, they use depth of field all the time to kind of focus on the characters, mm -hmm. and you get a lot of uh, for these outdoor scenes and things you get a lot of these little bokeh shapes that kind of appear where these uh, light points are in the background. And so from where I'm sitting, I thought that was rendered in the engine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of looking at it um, at an angle. Uh, yeah, there's, so. there's actually a scene. Um, I'm going to use the open world scene at the end and kind of oh, show awesome. some of the stuff. Um, yeah. Because I, I, I really love that Lost did this with, like, all the, uh, yeah. the bokeh. So it was like, you know, that I, I felt like that was, like, a really good scene to kind of grab, like, some of those, that light coming through the trees and things. Um, and then here's another one for Star Trek. Uh, and then in the background, you kind of have everything's just kind of out of focus, and everything's, it's a close-up shot, so everything's kind of focused we on, just on our subject. The whole time. I'm, I'm fine with that, too. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. You can't go big, big Trekkie here, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, the, the first thing I'm really going to kind of get into is, you know, what are the concepts of, um, there's, there's really like three things that make up um, depth of field that we use, um, and just understanding that. So I'm going to kind of go over that first before we really start kind of diving into the editor. So I'm going to continue with some of the screenshots here um, just to kind of give an idea. So the first one is uh, the focal length. Um, and what this is is, well, let me back up for a second. Um, if we look at this as our camera and our scene, everything over here, these, this red, blue, green dots is our actual scene of where we're applying focus. So the green would be the foreground, um, our focal point being the blue, and the background being the red. Um, and then we have the lens with the aperture that we're going to focus on. And then we have uh, the actual lens itself. So what that is is the distance between the lens and the, uh, the film back or the image sensor um, where you're actually uh, controlling. Uh, it's, it's the length of the lens, and it controls the, the field of view and how zoomed in or, or zoomed out a shot is. Um, so the first part we're going to focus on is the focal length. Um, so it, just to give you an idea, like if, if you're looking at real world cameras, these are a bunch of different focal lengths, um, you know, anywhere from like 8 to 15 millimeter range um, to some really large ones up here, like 300 millimeter range. Um, and these are all settings that we, we have control of in UE4 to give you that control for your depth of field. Hmm, okay. Um, so if we look at just the focal length, here I'm starting with a 50 millimeter. So this is only changing the distance between the lens here um, and the film back. So as we move, you can see that the field of view isn't really changing. We're just zooming in on the image that we do have. So we're going from a 50 to a 75 millimeter to a 100 millimeter. And as you're zooming in, notice that the background is also becoming a little bit more compressed. 
and that the the bokeh shapes for like the stoplights and everything in the background, all those really bright lights mm -hmm. are starting to get more of a bokeh shape to them compared to, um, sorry, let me go back. That's similar to the way the telescopes work too. Okay. Because your focal length, uh, as you push the... Right, you get the... the you get the, the smaller aperture mm -hmm. and that helps you focus a little more on right. distant stars and things like that. Right, so... It's really so cool to see it. Aperture. Right, and, and the next step we're gonna kind of get into is like with the aperture, you know, and, and allowing light into it. So, right. um, and I'll get into like the difference between the actual aperture versus, you know, what UE4 does with that. So. Um, Again, you know, we're just changing the, the length of the lens here, which just allows us to leave our camera in a stationary position and just zoom in on that without changing the, uh, the actual field of view um, or the, uh, the aspect ratio or the look of. <laughs> the, the field of view. Yeah, yeah. field of view. Um, okay, so uh, as, as Tim was just talking about, it's like the aperture. So the next thing we're gonna, uh, we have to focus on is uh, the lens here and then we have the aperture. Um, so this is the opening that actually allows light um, and our image to be captured um, through the lens. It also affects um, uh, how much blurring we actually get in the, the, the foreground and the background and, and the shape of our, bo or the size of our bokeh shapes that we're getting. So, um, so if we're looking at the front of the, uh, the lens here, um, what we have is one is the opening, which is our actual aperture itself um, that allows the light through. Um, and then we have uh, two here is going to be the diaphragm. Somebody said, say, James Bond circle. <laughs> James Bond circle? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think you only had like, mentioned like, something like that. Whenever. I was looking at this, and I was like, what does he say? <laughs> and then, yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, if you really like it, it's like the, the, the doc actually has a slider. It's like I, yeah. I can just sit there all day back and forth. Oh, yeah. It's all James Bondy. Um, but, okay, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, over here in two, uh, what we have is the actual diaphragm. So that's the mechanism that's actually closing in and, and changing our, our aperture shape uh, or aperture size. Mm -hmm. um, and what that is is it's measured in, in uh, what's called f-stop. So that's just uh, so what you can see here with this uh, diagram. And I promise we'll get to the editor. It's like I just <laughs> you got to get a lot of these concepts out of the way first. Right. It's important so um, that way, when I start adjusting settings, you'll kind of have an idea a little bit more. Um, so if we look here at our f-stop uh, 1.4, um, what you have is uh, everything is fully open. You're not seeing any of the mechanism, and everything is just being allowed in. So what you get with that is you get a very shallow depth of field um, where everything is much more blurred in the background and the foreground. Mm, okay. And then as you start to tighten that up and get a smaller, uh, or I'm sorry, a, a larger f-stop value, um, that mechanism closes in, and you get a wider depth of field, so everything is more in focused um, in the foreground and the background. Um, and just to give you a, a better idea of that as well, this is an image I found online. It's really kind of cool. Um, so we have the f-stop here, and it's like we're looking at 2.8. And you can see that the, the focal shot, or the focus of this uh, shot here is like this dog on a pedestal. Um, and the background starts to blur, and it's like there's not really a, uh, the, the bunny in the foreground starts to blur a little bit. But as you start to increase that value, that field starts to grow wider, so you're capturing more things mm -hmm. um, that can be in focus. Mm -hmm. um, and here's a, here's a shot that I had done for a Robo Recall um, that's actually in the dock with a nice little slider and everything. So um, with our full aperture open, everything's kind of blurred um, in the background and the foreground. You'll notice the, the cop car here with yeah. the lights. Um, uh, robot guy is like perfectly in focus. Um, 2.8, we're going and starting to, to tighten that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then with F point, or 5.6, uh, everything is starting to come a little bit more sharp all the way to that four in the background. Um, let's see here. And then our last concept that we want to cover um, is the focus distance. So these settings, what we're doing is we're not controlling, uh, we're controlling the, the distance between the lens and the subject of the shot. So um, in this diagram here, um, everything is lined up on our blue point, um, meaning that the green and the red will be out of focus, uh, which you can see in the diagram over here on the right. And then as I start to do this uh, in our rubber recall shot, um, you can see that the purple line here is, is sitting a few meters in front. So that's going to be around the cop car where everything's kind of in focus. Um, uh, robot and background's all out, out of focus a little bit, and then as we shift, Robots in focus, foreground and background's out of focus. And then we go to the construction equipment uh, barrier here, and everything's really start, uh, in focus along with the background and the foreground 
really kind of being a focus. So we're changing, changing what we're focusing on in the shot. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's just a couple of shots uh, I had from some movies that are, um, so here's a really close up shot of Blue from like Jurassic World. Yeah. Love that movie, by the way. <laughs> so it's like, uh, and just to give you a little concept of, you know, I, I wanted to show these examples because this isn't just focus distance, this is incorporating like all the, the, the other three things that we were talking about. So the, the aperture, the focus distance, the focal length. Um, so this is probably using like a lens that is um, more of a zoomed in lens, so we're using a longer focal length lens. Mm -hmm. um, we got uh, a, a lower f-stop value so that we get that, some of that sharper uh, bokeh in the background, mm -hmm. or um, those bokeh shapes. Mm -hmm. um, and then the focus distance is really tight because you're noticing that blue is like the only thing in focus and like yeah. from his neck down is really out of focus. Foreground and background are really out of focus. Mm -hmm. um, if we do the same here, here's a mid-range shot from like uh, The Dark Knight. Um, background is really out of focus. You notice like here on the ground, everything's kind of in focus right up until like around, like within a few feet of them. Yeah. So you kind of get like that mid-level. And again, it's like you're using a lens that is a little bit more of a, a mid-range lens, like maybe 50 to 100 millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, and then just, because everything in the background is, is not really got some large bokeh for it, so. And then from Back to the Future 3 here, it's like we have a really open wide shot and everything's, you can notice a little bit of blurring on the, the foreground shot here and then things really way off in the distance start to blur a little bit more. But as Doc Brown's showing, everything is just, you have that whole region right there. So we have a really low f-stop number. Um, and I'll come back to that one later. Okay, so. Um, uh, just, just since that's kind of like a, a, a midsection, is there any questions that kind of popped up or um, anything? And then I can kind of move on. On topic. Not so. Okay. We'll keep moving. All right. Cool. Um, okay. So, whenever you go to start using uh, depth and field in the, in the the, in your games or um, in setting things up, um, I'm going to pop out of my one that I'm piloting here. Um, you'll come over here. Um, oh. I should go ahead and mention, um, there's a couple of different ways to actually use cinematic depth of field. Um, I'm, I'm really only going to focus on using it with the cinematic camera because that gives us like all these options that I was going over, talking about focus distance, talking about focal length, um, and, and, and the aperture itself. So we get like the best control over this, and it, it, it gives you that real cinematic kind of feel and look, and it's, uh, it's kind of where we want to go with it. So what you'll do is you'll add one of these to the, to the scene. Um, since I've already got one, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Come down here, and I'm going to pilot that. So I'd set it up as depth of field camera one. And I've got my shot already set up. Um, and let me find it over here. OK, so it's this guy. And let's start looking at some of these uh, settings for the areas that I was kind of detailing a second ago. I'm going to minimize some of these so we can kind of see things a little bit more. Okay, so in your cinematic camera, I'm going to lock this so I don't click out of it as well. Um, the first thing I wanted to go ahead and do was pilot the camera that I'm using. So for, for this instance, it's uh, depth of field, oh, excuse me, uh, camera one. And it, it can be whatever you name it. That's just the name of mine. Um, but what I get is I get, uh, by piloting the camera, I get to actually see everything that's happening in the scene and changing it as I'm uh, adjusting settings. Um, so, for instance, if I were to, uh, let's see here, let me expand some of my settings. Um, so, if I start just changing settings, I'm actually, by piloting, I'm actually seeing all these things just change in real time right around me. So, hmm. um, okay, so the first section we talked about, like with all those settings, uh, the first thing we're going to do with our cinematic camera is go ahead and go to the lens settings. What we're going to do here is set up um, essentially some ranges for our focal length, um, our aperture. In here, it's listed as f-stop, uh, so that way we can have a maximum value and a lower, uh, a minimum value. Um, same for focal length. Uh, we can set a lens that is, uh, like the default here is 4 millimeters to 1,000 millimeters, um, which gives you a wide um, to a very uh, tight shot. So um, it just gives us a big range to play with. Um, and then... Uh, the focus distance is actually down here in uh, some of the other settings because that's already past the camera and that's where we're actually just adjusting things for our scene itself. Um, uh, the other thing here is the diaphragm blade count. Um, this is the only one that I kind of 
come back to and I'll tweak around uh, after the fact. Once I've got my values here for the, the focal length uh, and the f-stop, I don't really need to set up any more of those unless I'm really kind of just tweak something. But um, you know, for any any game that's working on it that wants like a specific shot, you know, you may tweak those and set them and just kind of leave them or whatever. Uh, but the diaphragm blade count, what this is is it's, uh, um, this allows us to actually set the number of blades that we have. So if we go back to that like James Bond kind of aperture that we have with the diaphragm mm -hmm. and all those blades and it looks, you know, as it starts to close in, it right. kind of looks really kind of cool. <laughs> um, we can actually change that um, to actually use uh, fewer blades or more blades. Um, to actually get more of a curved surface or more of a uh, more of a squared off one, um, so in here I've got it just set down to the lowest one, which is four, and I'm going to actually just lower my focus distance here. And, and what you're seeing here is you can start to see the shape of that bokeh is yeah. more of a square mm -hmm. um, as I'm just adjusting my focus distance because I'm not. It's it's all background like highlights and things, so that's where the bokeh is going to be. Um, so if I adjust my aperture, you start to see that that kind of more rounds out um, depend and, and changes the size depending on, on how things are going. But since we got a really big one here, uh, I'm going to go to four and just tweak it up to five. And you, you can clearly start to see these blades. So one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, it's just you know, it starts to make that pentagon. Right. right. Um, it just depends on the look that you're going for. Um, and I'm going to go back to my last shot I had here. Uh, like I said, with Lost Man, it's like they, they use this stuff all the time, and it actually became a distraction at some points, like for some night scenes, because you, when you start messing with it so much, you start to notice these little things. So it's like I zoomed in on one of the shots here, and you can actually start to count like all the blades that are going around. <laughs> you know, it just uh, it depends on the look you're going for, and, and, mm -hmm. and Lost changed it all the time. It was never consistently. It's like I, I noticed some shots that actually had fewer blades or some that yeah, had more blades. Like, is that... Do you feel like things like that are people not paying attention, or do you think it's trying to target I a certain feel for it? I honestly can't say on that okay. one. Um, I mean, the majority of stuff is like you know that that I've noticed just from watching the shows. Like I just have to speculate on it. It's like yeah. I'm you know not part of that film crew or, or anything right. even close. Um, it's like it, I would just say it's like they probably didn't expect people to just kind of zoom in because like if you <laughs> notice the shot here, yeah, it's like it's there. It's like no one's really kind of zooming in. Um, mm -hmm. It could just be that they went to rent equipment and that's the one that was available. Right. Because I mean that was a production studio down in Hawaii, so. But it just tells you like there's that much more to like think about right. even in your game design, like but the like shapes of the lights in the background. But if we go back to, nice, um, you know? uh, sorry, I'm scrolling all the way back here. Uh, the ones here for uh, that we Watches? chose for yeah. Star Wars um, demo here is like I think that's five yeah. that we got there. So it's like. You know, that, that's probably a little bit more definitive look that we went for, mm -hmm. for that, you know, a feel. for that demo. So, so it's definitely something that you can choose to do. Um, okay, so now that we've kind of got that one out of the way, <laughs> I, those are, those are kind of like the basic like lens settings that we, we got. And it's like once you kind of like decide on that, there's really, for me, there's no reason that I ever really kind of go back to them. Um, so you may feel the same way. So the next settings we're going to look at, um, excuse me is the uh, um, our focus settings. So this is where you're going to be doing like all your like tinkering and, and playing with the settings and, and getting everything the way that you like. Um, so let's see here. Apologies, one second. Um, so the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to go in the same order that I had previously. Let me find my focal length. Current focal length? Oh, is it? Just under oh, there we go. Yeah, I could. I was looking for current uh, or for <laughs> focal length and not current focal length. Yeah. You'll notice in my notes over here, I listed the next one down like current, so that way I'd notice it real quick. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Um, okay, so let me reorient my focus on my dude here. Or not. <laughs> there, we'll just manually. So it's the do intent it. of the eyedropper to be like focus on yeah, the yeah. thing that, yeah. And I'm not sure why it's not, but uh, yeah, the intent is uh, you can use the eyedropper and, and click on a subject and it'll go. Um, it might just be something with this camera and the, the way I've got something set up, but um, I'm not too sure right offhand. But anyways, uh, the current focal length. So uh, with this setting, uh, remember that we set those ranges. Uh, we left them at default for four, and four to 1,000. So 
you can uh, you can start adjusting this and and uh, as you start to scale that in and out, um, you start to get really more more bokeh in the background and everything. Um, notice that we've set a current aperture, so we're not changing things like that, um, and we're not changing any of our focal distance. We're we're completely focused on this guy, mm -hmm. and we're only changing our field of view that we do have. So, uh, so it's like you can use this, and it's all like the the one good thing about like cinematic uh, camera uh, actor is it's all like through sequencer. And I've got like a little short demo. I'll kind of run it. Kind of, I, I'm not a sequencer professional, so <laughs> uh, it's like I did a couple of like minor tweaks, you know, a couple of keyframes, and and uh, just showing some of the adjustments and stuff. Um, but we're going back to, uh, like we were talking about before, the focal, uh, let's see here. The focal length is really just changing your field of view. Um, when we're looking at the current aperture, uh, what we're doing is we, we have that range that we set from that really like shallow uh, uh, depth of field uh, or, or aperture range, f-stop range uh, of like 1.2, I think it was. Um, and it's all the way up to like 22. So you can get a really shallow, like background like where it's everything's blurred out and we're only focused on this guy because we don't really need to focus on everything in the background draws your attention here um, and then we can widen that up and have everything in the background if we wanted <laughs> um, and again all these things are like tweakable and like in sequencer too so it's really kind of cool just to kind of play around and just kind of do some simple little things right. um, and then our last one here uh, is a little bit more of a bigger one um, so we have our focus method, um, and right now I've got it set on manual. And what this allows me to do is manually set where I want the focus of the scene to be. Um, and if my eyedropper were working, I could click on someone and it would use their bounds and center it up to that. And what we can do is we can change. It's like, okay, you know, if I want to do a quick change, I, th I think they did a demo recently where they were uh, showing off um, sequencer and the Star Wars thing. And, it was, uh, they did like a quick shift mm -hmm. between the foreground and background to Phantasma, and it was like really kind of cool. Yeah, that was, uh, it was a demo just recently. Yeah. Like at, at Sigraph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, um, yeah, so it was like, it was really kind of like, it's like, oh, we need that quick shift, and it's like, it was all sequencer kind of yeah. stuff. So they did it in real time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, uh, I mean, really, it's, it's just like film. You just have to know your focal distances, and then you can just kind of shoot between those two and, right. and, and line everything up. Mm -hmm. um, kind of opens your eyes up a little bit more to film, like when you start watching some of that stuff and you see the behind the scenes and it's like, okay, you know, they have the little marks on the ground, like yeah. where everything's focused. It shatters yeah, your entire like, illusion. This, this has like ruined my experience of like most films now. <laughs> I've had to tell Guillaume that too. So. That's about right. <laughs> but, uh, um, so one of the, the cool things is with this, and it's like, I'll, I'll show this a little bit more later, I'm just showing it right now, um, just to give you an idea, is you may not, if you're manually tweaking uh, where your focus is, um, you may not exactly know where it's at, um, especially if your eyedropper is not working for you. Um, but we have a draw debug focus plane option that you can enable. And what this does is it makes a plane that actually follows where that focus line is. So as I move it through the scene, I can say, OK, I want to be on the, uh, the little orange guy back here. So that's my, my focal point. I can see uh, that. And it's like I can change the color of it if it's not fitting like the color of the scene. Like it's a little harder to see in this one. Mm -hmm. so. You can change that color to fit uh, something a little bit better for you. Hmm. And then the other option I had here was tracking. So what this enables me to do is actually pick an actor that I want to track. Um, yeah, we've had quite a few folks asking about that. Yeah, so the tracking thing, um, and this is like where sequencer kind of really kind of comes in uh, cool with it is, you know, it's like since you have like your, your camera set up and you want to set your actor up to walk through the scene, mm -hmm. um, which actually let me just go ahead and run that demo and it's like I can kind of talk about it. Um, but again, all these settings just go back to, you know, the concepts that we were kind of showing before. And um, I think it would be a little harder to talk about these without kind of knowing like what part of the camera, because it's all like tied together, but it's like, yeah. you know, you want to kind of set some things and come back to it. Um, so you need to know how like each setting is affecting it. And right. Okay, so I think this is my one. Let me unlock this. Sorry, I set up a few of these and um, some I end up abandoning like that one I did abandon. <laughs> Poor scene. So are these just different demos to okay. sort of um, illustrate? Yeah, yeah. I, I was kind of playing around, kind of seeing like what I wanted to show. And it's like you know, you, I didn't want to get too complex with a lot of stuff. Um, 
because like people can kind of get lost in the details of everything and just going, okay, wait, there's something on there. It's like, um, and I thought this was kind of like the easier way. Um, so I'm gonna move this off screen. It's just, it's just my sequencer thing. Like I said, it's just a couple of, uh, um, I've added my third person guy who's just walking through the scene. Um, the demo camera where I change a couple of settings, um, whether it's manual focus or, um, and I set like a current aperture that I want. Um, you know, nothing complex there. Uh, I, I think it was like stuff I was able to set up in like just a few minutes. So it's, it's, so let me go back and we'll pilot my camera. Find this guy. And I've got the focus. So I'm going to actually hide this guy because he was just kind of like my bonus guy. Oh. But the guy back here that's all like looming over his shoulder was kind of the one that I intended. <laughs> so we're doing the tracking on him. So as everything's moving through the scene, you'll, you'll notice that the background's starting to blur out a little bit more. Um, and then as he comes up to be buddy-buddy with this guy, everything's kind of coming in to focus. Oh, yeah. um, so by doing the tracking, we're just kind of completely following that guy and, and doing everything. Um, Another thing, too, was that he stepped off screen. So you didn't see where he went or did anything. Um, so we can actually go back to our camera. Let me close that for a second. And then we can set up our tracking options. And then I think that was right. Look at tracking. Um, You know, I should have walked through this one a little bit more. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. Right. Um, but yeah, is yeah. it that you can set it to yeah, have it, him follow? Yeah, the camera around? will just kind of pan and follow. You know, I'm, um, just because I'm having a little difficulty, I'm not going to make you guys suffer. Uh, <laughs> so that kind of, I, I guess, goes over like most of like the the, th the settings that we do have for, for the camera and what you can kind of do with it. And um, and and really, like messing around with like depth of field really isn't that hard. It's like it's just some com concepts that you kind of have to really <laughs> grasp onto of, you know, what you're focusing on, whether that's like the, the focal length of the lens, whether it's uh, the actual lens that you're getting, so that way you can justify like the shape of the bokeh and right. and the size of the bokeh in your scene, and then the distance of what you actually want to focus on in the shot. Um, now I know some of them have been so asking, and maybe we get to this later. But like, yeah. what is the effect of like performance and editing all these kinds of things? Um, yeah, kind of uh, the next section I was going to kind of go into was a little bit more of like uh, debugging stuff. Um, I'm not going to go so much into optimization. I know okay. we kind of listed it, but it's like I started looking at it, and it's like some of the tweaks that you make there aren't really noticeable on on like a live stream. Yeah. Um, but what I did uh, get my hands on was Guillaume's. Uh, he had uh, uh, his presentation at SIGGRAPH, mm -hmm. which is the life of a boca. <laughs> and he has like so much technical information in there yeah. that it'll just like blow your mind with how this stuff works. Oh and it's 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 got a lot of really cool examples where he's actually showing how to um, some comparison shots for mm -hmm. for what things are and and how you can optimize. And even in our doc page, we have um, some of the console variables listed that were actually um, uh, more starting points for you to kind of get started. Mm -hmm. uh, for things to focus on. We didn't kind of list everything because there's a lot, <laughs> but we gave you the ones that are like a starting point, especially if you're like developing for console and you want to, you know, these like are all the things you can, to start yeah, these right. are, these are all things you can add to your scalability settings. So that way it's like, you know, if you have to, you know, if you're on PC, you can say, you know, low, medium, high or whatever. Right. As people start adjusting those settings, you can adjust these settings along with it. Oh, perfect. Um, making it just that much easier to kind of optimize for what you want in your game. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I definitely recommend checking out uh, Guillaume's slide deck. That he's got because it's. Have we made that available? Um, it's on the uh, it's on the doc page. Okay, excellent. So I've got it down in the resources section. So. So we got a, a question that came in. Yeah. Um, about apertures and and FFM Happy Pie wants to know: Is it possible to use an image or something else as a custom aperture shape? Um. Okay. So that's not really purview for this stream, and it's it's actually I I don't want to talk too much about it because it's going to be deprecated. But our old Boca depth of field um, okay. option. Uh, it, it's going to be removed at some point in the future. I don't know when. Um, but the goal is to have pretty much like two options. So we're going to have one for mobile, one for cinematic. And gotcha. the idea with this one is to have it um, performant enough uh, so that you can change the shape of the bokeh. And um, it's like I know there's some, I've, I've seen some photography tricks like where people try and change, like uh, they'll, they'll do like a heart aperture. Mm -hmm. And it's like they just you know, tape right. on the front of the camera and they do some really kind of cool stuff. Um, I'm not aware of anything like that that's coming. Um, all right. But wouldn't argue that would be cool, but 
It's like I, I, I imagine that at that point it just becomes a little bit more like the old bokeh depth of film, just a little bit more expensive. But that's just me guessing. <laughs> Speculation. Um, Educated yeah. guesses. Right? So, uh, um, yeah, I guess if there was any other questions, I can kind of tackle those before I jump in the next section, or I can just dive in. Um, go ahead and dive in, and we'll just ask. And okay. We'll do the okay. So. Um, in this last little section, I, I wanted to kind of cover like some debugging and troubleshooting um, stuff. Uh, there's only a couple things I'm going to show here and just kind of, it'll kind of help you uh, get an idea of where to look for things and like some of the issues that you're kind of having with uh, depth of field. Um, so I'm going to pilot this last camera here. I'm going to deselect this guy over here. Um, okay, so in this shot, um, what you're seeing in the background is like uh, for we have some windows here, and we actually have a mesh and we have a material. This is transparent material, but none of that gets written to the the depth buffer. Um, so what you're seeing is everything is is out of focus for everything else in the background except for this window and anything beyond it because that's that's not supported for for uh, um, depth of field by default. You have to enable some things. So. Um, what I've done is I've made a little keyboard shortcut for myself, and I've enabled, so disabling separate translucency enables uh, it to work with the depth of field in the background. So you notice everything in that window has now become blurred mm -hmm. and out of focus uh, the way we would expect um, versus it being on. Um, and for things like this, you would just go through the, uh, the actual material, and you can enable uh, render after DO, uh, DOF is what it's listed as in the material editor. Um, and you probably want to just do this for the materials that you need. It is um, not for everything. Um, I think there is like some performance cost for it, so uh, just to render it in. But uh, it's uh, it's an option there. You know, when you start getting these things, um, I think like some of the original like screenshots that I had uh, had originally done with um, the infiltrator demo and and depth of field is like like there's a lot of uh, particle effects and they're using like transparent sprites and things like that. Mm. And you get a lot of the smoke in the background, it's like really sharp and everything else is kind of out of focus. <laughs> um, and this really kind of is like, you know, we definitely love that filmic look, man. I, I know I do. Um, even if it kind of breaks my, my movie going experience at home. <laughs> um, and then as promised, let me go to, let me go to my maps here. And I'll not save that. Okay, so I've got like two more things to show for some troubleshooting kind of things, and then uh, any questions we kind of have, we can kind of dive into. Perfect. Um, okay, so for this one, I wanted to show off. Uh, uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show the debug uh, plane view again. Um, so. Oh, uh, So I've got my camera here that's that's set up. Actually, let me go to game view so you don't see that other camera. Um, and I'm going to enable my draw debug plane. And what I get here is like um, with this scene, it's a, it's a little bit easier. You can see that bright bright purple plane mm -hmm. um, as I start shifting focus um, around. It, again, it's just it's it's something really kind of uh, to help guide you um, on where focus is if you're not entirely sure. Um, even still with Oh, my, my eyedropper is working here. Yay. Yay. Okay, so um, using my eyedropper, it's like I can actually zoom in and out on some of these things. So, for instance, like uh, these two guys in the background, the orange and the blue guy, um, the orange guy is a little bit in front of the blue guy. Um, so I may not want the entire focus to be there. So it's like, you know, just use that as a guiding point and then kind of fill it out and kind of see, you know, what makes uh, the best uh, sense for your thing. I mean, these guys being so far back and, and our aperture being a little low. Um, it's probably not as big a deal for one to be a little out of focus over the other one, but unless they're both like very camera hungry. Yeah, exactly. And they both want the attention. So yeah. lost. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't every, want to say it. Every every character. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about me. It's like, man, there's there's monsters in the background. I want to see that. No, nope, we're focusing on characters. <laughs> um, and then uh, the last thing here is going to be um, we're going to go to show. And then we're going to pop down to visualize, and we're going to go over to depth of field layers. So um, what you get here is you get kind of like a general idea um, of 
what's in the foreground, what's being blurred in the background. So green being foreground, uh, blue being the background, and uh, a black grayish uh, kind of being our, our mid to focal area. Um, and you'll notice that compared to other depth of field methods that we have, like whether it's uh, Gaussian or um, Bokeh at the moment, um, this region is very tightly controlled to, to give that more cinematic feel. So you, know, so you get the, the, the focal distance. Um, whereas the other ones kind of have more of like a region and they can kind of spread that out a little bit more. Um, and, and just to completely throw everyone for a loop, these colors do not match my diagrams that I had before with the green, the red, and the blue. Why not? <laughs> I know. I realized it afterwards. You troll. After I, I did troll. <laughs> I realized it after I had set up everything. And I was just like, no, I need to go back and fix that at some point. I like how you did know with like a victory bump. Like yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, well, I, I'm so happy like the docs are out there, and it's like I'm really mm. like I love this doc, and and that everyone's just kind of been clamoring over it, and just um, like I've gotten like so much positive feedback from it, so it's really nice. No, they're very um, helpful. So. And that was uh, it, it was all thanks to like Guillaume like helping me out with it. So, um, but again, you know, it's like this is our our um, so as we're shifting that focus in the scene. Um, you can actually see that more things are blurred in the, in the foreground like we expect with the green and then um, our, our black, gray, mid-ground area that's in focus and then um, blue in the out-of-focus uh, out area. Um, and that pretty much sums up uh, what I wanted to kind of show off unless uh, people have questions I need to demo something. And um, we've got a few questions. Um, let me just go to some of these other shots here I've got too because they're kind of play around with a bunch of things and just kind of I don't know, experimenting with a number. Yeah. So it's like what you can kind of see here is, let me click off my camera. Um, it's kind of like more of that lost kind of thing. It's like I did like a, a, a very like, it, this is a far, a, a camera that's like really far from where our, um, like if I eject, like you can see this this distance is like really far out from, from where our characters are, but I'm using a really like uh, really long um, uh, millimeter lens. Mm -hmm. And zooming in and, and kind of bringing some of that background uh, forward uh, with the bokeh and everything. Let's see. So. All right. Um, so they're wondering, um, you know, we've talked about being able to focus on a character or an actor, and they're wondering if you can focus on something, you know, smaller like the eyes instead. I imagine if you just set. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Um, an object yeah, that just goes, goes back to. Uh, pick it um, let me go back to this camera and, and I'll focus on the guy's like chest piece here. So I'm just kind of setting arbitrary. Let, let me, since my dropper works, I'll zoom in on. Um, then we're gonna go down here to current aperture or current focal length. I'm sorry. So I'm using a really high, like, because I'm not moving my camera forward or anything like that. Right. Um, let's see here. But you notice it's like, okay, so like whenever I selected him, it's like everything kind of centers up on him, so we have an idea of where the focus is. But I need to adjust it just a little bit so that way I can kind of bring it more to like his chest area. Mm -hmm. And kind of focus on that Unreal Engine that that would be there if it wasn't so bright. Right. <laughs> I, th I think they meant but more is like, th can they track that as well? So like, um, you know, well before yeah, yeah, the yeah. other scene, okay, you yeah, tracked yeah. Um, the whole mannequin. Could you set up an actor or something so that you can just track like? You can track it. Um, yes, so. actually. Uh, let me get back to the other scene because um, there's something to play around with. I don't. It wasn't really. It was more of like a, a sequencer and kind of like a tracking thing rather than it was like a depth Actual, of field thing. So I kind yeah. of like ditched it. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I did have, uh, let me go back to Blueprint Guy map here. Um, and let me open to a sequencer kind of thingy. Uh, you know what, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, so in sequencer, you can actually, um, you can control, uh, you know, your focus and all that stuff. So it's like, you know, just having these, you're exposing these so that way you're actually using those settings um, is fine. Um, and you can actually adjust some of those, but um, if we go to our, get in here and select my guy, um, which actually was going to be the camera. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing around now, <laughs> <laughs> trying to think about it real quick. This is uh, live Q&A. Yeah. This yeah. 
of development. Because like I said, like man, I messed up around with this like two weeks ago, and it's like it's like oh, that's really cool. I need to remember that, and then <laughs> not entirely, but um, okay. So we have the draw debug tracking position. So you actually get this option, and when it's enabled, let me see if I can find and highlight the guy here. Oops. Why did that bounce around like that? Hmm. Let's see here. I'm breaking things. I swear. Just break it all the things. That's why. <laughs> I'm just gonna break it all. Yeah, oh I'm, totally, I'm totally breaking out. Yep. What I did <laughs> we only do this in real time. Yeah, man. Okay, so to high level answer your question, yes, you can do that. <laughs> um, I encourage you to try it out because I know I had it working. Um, but what you enable is you enable the look at tracking, so you have your guy, and then there's a draw debug look at tracking position, and what those does is it gives you like a little yellow box, uh -huh. and then you can use the actor to track, and then the uh, relative offset, uh. and what it does is it allows you to change that position of like where it's, where it's, yeah, where it's bad. actually focusing. Okay. And I don't know what it's <laughs> even focused on. Oh, it's like on cog, cog something. It's like the one door. of the. Let me see if I can find the. Yeah. It's bizarre. Let me just see if I can find like one of the guys. <laughs> okay, so like some dude up here. Yeah, I think he's like tracked at his foot right now. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, I see it moving. Kind of. Seems to be snapping back. But anyways, that's that's how you would do it. It's like uh, in theory. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can figure <laughs> it out while while we move on to the next question. And I'll see if I can. Uh, sure. Okay. Hey, there we go. Got it. Oh. See, all yeah. we had to do was talk about potentially moving on. And okay, so it starts it starts like at his feet or whatever. Um, that's why it won't let me move because like I'm tracking him. Oh, gotcha. I wonder if it's because I got the sequencer thing to open too. Maybe. There's a million things happening. I. I do the rendering things. I don't do like all the <laughs> other fancy <laughs> things. It's all good. So, um, so yeah, there goes short there's answer is yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so okay, here we go. go. I got it. I got it actually working now. I actually feel like I've actually accomplished a little something. Vindication. Yeah, Ooh. there we go. Oh, not there. <laughs> so okay. you would set it near their face or their. Yeah, eyes yeah. You can set, you can set it wherever it is. So it's like you know, if, if, like let's just say if a character's like holding something. And you want to take that really sharp focus like off of them and zoom in on something. Right. You can you can totally use like these kind of things and and then track it. So. Yeah. You and should be able to at least, as far as I'm aware. For those um, color overlays in the debug, can you actually set the what colors they display? So uh, in its default state, it was no, like green uh, and blue. Um, no, it's there's probably some code changes you can make, but mm. it's like I I don't know anything about gotcha. that. Gotcha. Okay. Um. So they're saying, unlike in a real camera, can you set focus on two separate actors and have sort of a, a midfield out of focus? Well, I mean, yeah, it just kind of goes back to like uh, setting your your focus wherever you want it to be, um, like. Uh, but it's that it, for me, what it's sounding like is like they mm -hmm. had these like two characters, mm -hmm. and I set each of them in focus. But can the like middle be out of focus? Oh, the middle so out of focus. Oh, it's so not it's like, like, a, it's not like a real focus camera. here in the foreground, focus yeah. in the background, mid unfocused. Mm -hmm. No. No. <laughs> this you, is you, you get like one real focus life. plane. <laughs> uh, let's see. They're saying in one of the formulas there is a lot of um, grain. Okay. So how does it cope? There's a lot of grain as far. How will it cope with? Difficult situations like exteriors that have large distances. Do um, you feel like we see a lot of grain? I, with this method, I personally don't. I, like, I would actually encourage you to go and take a look at Guillaume's uh, stuff um, or his slide deck because he he goes into like every detail about how this method works and the underlying code of it. And there's like tons of uh, of um, comparison images there. So this right now, the settings that we do have is kind of like a like what we feel comfortable with and with performance or whatever. Yeah. So you can go higher quality if you want. Um, you're you're going to suffer some performance cost on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he details a bunch of that information in his slide deck as well. So um, I'm still digesting it. It's like 169 pages. Um, <laughs> a lot of it's images, but a lot of it is a lot of math and a lot of it is a lot of like really kind of detailed things that he's, he's worked on. Mm -hmm. um, there's even like bonus things that he didn't even include in the graph in there that's... Um, that is all just information. Sneaky slides. So, so yeah, it's like, uh, um, and he goes into more performance things. I actually kind of hit him up 
because I, I want to get this added to the page in like some digestible kind of way because right. he has a lot of bonus slides that are performance oriented to kind of show you like, okay, changing these settings are going to affect this amount of performance. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really useful information if people are going to start really adjusting those settings. Yeah. Um, because it can really, if you're targeting console or whatever platform it is, um, desktop, it, it, you, you want to kind of find that ground that, that, that makes the sense for you. And, you know, and using the scale settings, settings, these, these things can kind of help. So Can you sort of touch on some of the things that maybe a little more costly versus some of the others or like um i don't do i don't know, know. I, no. I really don't know offhand no, um okay. uh a lot of them can be found by just bringing up uh what's it um r.dof and All the and what you get is yeah you get you get a bunch of things here um they're kind of dealing with the gather the scatter um mm -hmm. there's some debug stuff in here as well that i'm not really messed with um uh the algorithm up here switches between the old method until that's kind of removed Okay. So, so you can actually do a comparison of what our old method is, and 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 the quality that there and the cost there, versus what our new method is. So it's, uh, um, oh, that's great. But you can also like some of the stuff that Guillaume does show in his slides, um, is actually showing some of the quality of the bokeh like really zoomed in. So that way, it's like you have a, a, a mid ground shot, but it's like you're really zooming in on that to kind of see like some of the rings that kind of make up things, and some of these settings will actually kind of <laughs> adjust that. But again, you're paying performance cost. Yeah, that makes sense. That's neat. Um, Seems like a fun tool to just kind of play with and just. It, it's been my most favorite doc yeah. to work on so far. So. Yeah, it's, it, I feel like I'm gonna go back to my desk and. Like just I, I just get lost like in it sometimes. It's like just lost. It, you get lost. Yeah, in it? I get. I get, yeah. I get lost. Um, oh, gotta go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was wondering if there are some uh, camera lens scattering options. So is there? Camera lens scattering. Yeah. No. So a more yeah. accurate type of bloom effect where the light scatters inside the lens based on aperture size. And oh, uh, size. yeah, I meant to mention that. I started too earlier, and then I'm just going to blame Tim. I Thanks think he folks. distracted me. Probably. Um, <laughs> okay, so the, the one Talking thing about our... third person isn't funny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh. Okay. okay, anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so the, the one thing with, like, UE4 is, like, we, we give you the most control over things by not having you worry about the exposure settings that you have to worry about. So light doesn't actually affect the change with the aperture as it would with a normal camera lens. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you, you can light and, and, and just things uh, based on exposure itself uh, if you need to adjust that. But, um, but yeah, it does, uh, I think that answers the question. But okay. Um, <laughs> they're wondering if it changes anything if they decide to move the camera and not the actor or um, something in the scene. So in regards to the tracking. So instead of... Uh, focusing on something and then floating the camera around it um, versus well yeah like with sequencer you can, you can, you can set right? up all your uh, all your focal points and everything um, so I guess if you're tracking the actor it wouldn't really matter if you're kind of circling around mm -hmm. if you're doing all the manual focus stuff but if I if I'm like hey keep this thing in focus and as long as I if I move the camera will yeah yeah, yeah as long as you're using around the around tracking stuff that then? that um, I pointed to um, yeah that that should work and then. But if you're doing things like where you're switching between actors and things like that, and you're manually controlling the focus, kind of like they did with the most recent like uh, demo, like we're going foreground, background, like with the characters, mm -hmm. um, like all that stuff can be keyframed. So I mean, that gets more sequencer oriented rather right. than depth of field. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, all that stuff can be keyframed. Um, interesting. Can we record the focus in real time and then tweak it afterwards? Or focus chain? They're wondering if they can also use like scroll wheel as far as like zooming in and out um, um oh for the for the focus uh, mm -hmm. not that i'm aware of okay. um like it, it, the level editor viewport let me get rid of this um like if i scroll my mouse wheel i'm, I'm actually just moving the camera since i'm piloting it um so yeah that's that's not an option i'm aware of none of our details panels ever work that way okay um, um let's see they're saying so say you have a scene and everything um it's a 2D scene, and everything's on the Z. Can you say that an actor is actually um, 500Z, positive or negative, have the camera simulate the fact that it's blurred out? Um, or do they actually have to be at a location to have the camera do that? It's a little, a little strange. Yeah, it's a little, Not quite a little strange. Sure so the way I'm hearing that is, can I move a character out of focus? Mm -hmm. um, and will the camera pick up that extended focus? Um, if it's tracking okay. the character. Because, um, uh, again, whatever object that you're tracking, it's like you're just setting the camera to track to that. It just goes and back that to DOF that. will change with the character's movement. Um, well, yeah, the depth of field will change. Um, 
with it, but it's all based on the focal dis well the focal distance is going to be the same because you're tracking the character right you're you're um, so you're attached to that character so. right and you've already set the the lens so whatever your lens is or your field of view is is going to stay the same right. so if i move that character far away unless i'm in sequencer or whatever changing that with it it um, follows it follows so that that just goes back to like those three concepts of you right. have to understand these three things and how they kind of work together um to kind of get a really good grasp. Like for static shots, like I've done here, um, a lot of things, um, I can just, I can tweak these independently and kind of get a feel for things. When you start getting a little bit more motion oriented, it's, it gets a little bit more difficult in my mind because you have to, I'm, I'm not like a professional with it. It's like, I've used the tool quite a bit in here, but it's like, you know, in sequencer, you're starting to try and treat it like you would in like real world camera settings. And, gotcha. And follow those things, so. All right. Well, I, I have so much more respect for all those people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had respect for them before, but man, I was like, yeah, it's and, 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 and again, just go back to Lost Man and, and watching them do those shifts and changes and things. Yeah. It's just, it's amazing the things that people can do just to, to, to give you that focus in the scene. Um, well, we're out of time. Okay. This has been <laughs> absolutely enlightening. Um, all this background, I think, with mm -hmm. the camera information was mm -hmm. very valuable because obviously you understand that it's like, oh, we have this cool new feature, but yeah. Understanding those foundations um, was really helpful to yeah, definitely leading into all the other very aspects of the camera. Very setup. glad we got to focus on this today. Oh, geez. And we're done, right? <laughs> End scene. Um, <laughs> so I have again, thank you so much for yeah. doing this, putting this together. I think it's uh, a lot of folks seemed like it was really valuable and helpful oh, cool. to them. Um, I've dropped a survey into the chat. Uh, we would always love it if you'd fill that out. Let us know what topics you'd like to see in the future, yep. how we did on these streams, how we can do better in, um, on future ones. And we also give away t-shirts yep. for those this of you the that last one to fill next it poll. out. Um, if you so. include your email address, uh, we'll pick a winner each week and send them a nice piece of swag. Um, nice. As always, check your local area for UE4 meetups in your city. And if there isn't one, you can always reach out to us and start one. It's always great to work with fellow developers and see what they're working on, share pains yeah. and we, we insights and excitements together. Today. Yeah, that's true. So, so that's meetup.com slash pro slash Unreal Engine. Um, always submit your projects for the NVIDIA Edge program. We'll be, we have one round to announce for August, and we're looking for our next group of winners here in September. So be sure to tag us, check out more information on that. You might end up with a 1080 TA at your door. So who doesn't want a sweet graphics card? Um, you wanna talk about that countdown? Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so every week we start the show with a, with a five minute countdown. We're always looking to highlight projects you're working on. So if you, uh, if you film what you're doing and send us a, like film like an hour of it, and then compress it down to a, like a five minute speed developer. Uh, take out the camera. Uh, we think everybody is beautiful, but we want to make sure that the, the focus is on the work. Uh, send us over a screenshot, uh, or I'm sorry, send us over a, a PNG of your logo, a short description of the game, and that five minute compressed to community at unrealengine.com, and you might just see your work highlighted in the beginning of the stream. Yeah. Make sure you follow us on social media and here on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook. And all, all the places things. that we're at. Yeah. So thank you all for stopping by. Again, fill out the survey, and we'll see you next week with our summer UE4 jam results. Nice. Bye, Bye all. everybody. Thank you. <laughs>